Greetings, everyone. Greetings from Mexico City. I am um, speaking to you from the tail end of a trip I've done at Mexico City in Cuernavaca, working with an academic conference here and um, some clients. Um, but I wanted to uh, keep up my habit of logging. And so today, I'd like to uh, do a quick video about what might be the impact of a second Trump administration on higher education. And I'm basing this uh, on a detailed read-through Project 2025. So I think most of you know about this. This is a Heritage Foundation document, nearly 900 pages long, a detailed blueprint for what the second Trump administration might do. If you haven't had a chance to read the book, I'll have a link to our reading in the chat. The key thing I want to do today, though, is just draw out all the implications for what it means for higher education. And that is, I'll come to some qualifications and hedging at the end, but to the extent that a Trump administration, A, wins, and B, takes this seriously, then we might get a glimpse of what Trump might be doing to colleges and universities. So let me break this down by some different headers and different topics. Uh, first, we have the question of what uh, Trump might do to the Department of Education. Now, the Project 2025 uh, call for this is to shut it down and to redistribute some of its functions elsewhere while privatizing others. It would end the Biden forgiveness of student loans uh, practice, and it would consider privatizing or reprivatizing student loans. It would use the successor agencies to end DEI wherever they can, and also to allow students to sue government for privacy violations, which is something to do with trans policy, but I can't quite make it out. It would also encourage teaching of other topics in higher education. Uh, for example, quote, free markets and economics, unquote. Uh, elsewhere, the government should, quote, require institutions, faculty, and fellowship recipients to certify that they intend to further the stated statutory goals of serving American interests, although it's unclear what that might mean. It would also encourage accreditation agency changes, uh, so that is encouraging the start of new accreditors, but also trying to support a Florida-style cycling, so that is a given college or university would be encouraged to or be required to uh, shift between multiple accreditors over time. Uh, it would also try to get creditors to stop supporting DEI. On the side of higher education economics, Project 2025 is actually pretty ambitious. Uh, at one point, it urges uh, the Trump 2.0 administration to hold colleges accountable for loan repayment. Now, that's not spelled out in detail how they would do it, but that's an interesting theme to see. Uh, it would also reduce funding to academic research by cutting reimbursement for indirect costs which it can be very, very significant, especially for research universities. And it also, and this is very, very important, it would try to reduce the labor market's preference for college degrees. Uh, we have one quote, for example, um, that it would uh, minimize bachelor's degree requirements. Uh, quote, the president should issue an executive order stating that a college degree shall not be required for any federal job unless the requirements of the job specifically demand it, unquote. Uh, later in the book, the Department of Labor section also calls on Congress to end college degree requirements for federal positions. So this is, this is in line with a uh, bipartisan push we've seen at state and uh, city government levels to try to reduce the uh, or end the paper ceiling, that is to open more jobs to people without uh, bachelor's or associate's degrees or graduate degrees. Uh, this, this text also would like to boost apprenticeships, uh, mostly in competition with college university study. So I mean, one quick takeaway is that Project 2025 really takes aim at college uh, finances and wants to draw down some of its enrollment. Project 2025 also takes a look at international education and research. And this has a lot of moving parts, so I want to hit these from a few different angles. One is that it wants to reduce some international student numbers. So this is an important thing to keep in mind that the United States really relies on international student enrollment. Uh, ever since 2000, really, we've been recruiting a great deal of international students for graduate school and undergraduate school. And those tend to pay more money than the typical domestic student. Uh, they also meet some other goals, political goals, uh, and they have been a, a kind of centerpiece of a lot of American enrollment management. Uh, that dipped down during the first Trump administration, and it looks like this policy document would have that dip down come again. Uh, for example, this is a quote, uh, ICE, 
uh, immigration uh, enforcement, should end its current cozy deference to educational institutions and remove security risks from the program. This requires working with the Department of State to eliminate or significantly reduce the number of visas issued to foreign students from enemy nations, unquote. So this would obviously have a direct impact on a lot of would-be students who want to pursue careers in the United States. Uh, but this would also depress international uh, student interest, both directly, so if they start reducing uh, uh, enrollment from certain enemy nations, however that's defined, but also as a knock-on effect, as we saw during the first Trump administration, that a lot of nations not directly impacted by this would see, nevertheless, the U.S. as an you know, unfriendly destination and would pull back student numbers. Uh, Project 2025 would also try to align higher education with its anti-China foreign policy. And this is a really important theme of Project 2025. Repeatedly, it sees China as America's number one adversary. Repeatedly, it comes up with different ways of fighting and combating and out-competing China. And this definitely plays a role in higher education here. It wants universities to follow the American economy model of decoupling from that nation. So less research sharing, less collaboration and, and fewer students. Um, they would also have the Department of Commerce and other agencies scrutinizing faculty, staff, and students for ties to the Chinese government. Now also on the research side, there's quite a, quite a bit of research uh, discussion in Project 2025, both on what it would support as well as what it would oppose and try to get rid of. Uh, so there's a, a fervent plea for more academic research on energy, uh, not on climate change, uh, but mostly in developing new sources. Uh, it definitely opposes climate change. Uh, at one point, they call for shutting down the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA. Um, there's also quite a few connections that the book draws between um, the academic world and the military world. Uh, so, for example, the, the book wants to purge military education of DEI. So you could think of military training, but you could also think about the great military academies like West Point and Colorado Springs. Uh, for example, here's one sample passage, quote, uh, we should audit the course offerings at military academies to remove Marxist indoctrination, eliminate tenure for academic professionals, and apply the, apply the same rules to instructors that are applied to other DOD contracting personnel, unquote. Um, on top of this, there are the ideas for creating two new academies. Uh, so one would be to create a Space Force Academy, and this is actually described in some interesting detail, quote, to attract top aero-astro students, engineers, and scientists, and develop astronauts. The academy could be attached initially to a large existing research university like Caltech or MIT, share faculty and funding, and eventually be built separately to be on par with the other service academies. Project 2025 also wants to create a new academy for financial warfare, and here's a description, quote, Treasury, Department of Treasury, should examine creating a school of financial warfare jointly with the Department of Defense. If the U.S. is to rely on financial weapons, tools, and strategies to prosecute international defensive and offensive objectives, it must create a specially trained group of experts dedicated to the study, training, testing, and preparedness of those deterrents, unquote. I haven't seen many people talk about this in higher education, but those are two big proposals. Um, shifting ground a bit uh, onto the uh, education side, the opening of the book uh, is a clarion cry for culture war, and one part targets education in a particular way. Um, this is a, a book that's very anti-pornography, uh, and it calls on educators for supporting that. So here's the key quote. Educators and public librarians who purvey pornography should be classed as registered sex offenders and telecommunications and technology firms that facilitate its spread should be shuttered, unquote. So this would you know, involve thinking about what would happen to, say, a university librarian uh, who stocks any document that we might consider to be pornographic, uh, or as well as any faculty member who uh, teaches something like this in class. I, for example, have taught in my British literature classes material that would definitely be considered pornographic. We could go back to the classics like James Joyce or, say, uh, Rochester, the great British poet, um, this is a really call, you know, a call for uh, drawing a bead on higher education specifically on this. And the telecommunications and technical firms brings to mind IT, both on campus IT as well as everything from our ISPs uh, to other companies. Uh, I, I think this, is, this would be laughably difficult to try to implement, but we might see efforts to do this. For example, we've seen some American states impose uh, age restrictions on accessing pornography online. 
Um, furthermore, to kind of philosophical, but definitely a cultural level, uh, Project 2025 is interestingly anti-intellectual in a populist way. Uh, so there's this really almost lyrical call to supporting people who don't have degrees. Here, listen to this. Intellectual sophistication, advanced degrees, financial success, and all other markers of elite status have no bearing on a person's knowledge of the one thing most necessary for governance, what it means to live well. That knowledge is available to each of us, no matter how humble our backgrounds or how unpretentious our attainments. It is open to us to read in the book of human nature to which all are offered the key just by merit of our shared humanity. I mean, you can expect, unquote, uh, you can expect to see uh, more such uh, celebrations of demotic intelligence and common people against snooty intellectuals. It's an old theme in American culture, but one that sounded again. So uh, let me just sum up. Uh, Project 2025 has a comprehensive set of policies for higher ed. They're largely about reform. Uh, that is trying to reform institutions as well as create a couple of new ones. They want to try and get rid of DEI to involving colleges and universities in a ramped up contest with China, uh, creating new academic institutions to cutting off student loan forgiveness. Uh, this presents multiple challenges, threats, and active dangers to American higher education. Uh, some of the proposed policies strike at academic teaching, research, finances, autonomy, academic freedom, and some of the most vulnerable in our community. Project 2025 outlines routes for expanded governmental surveillance of and action upon colleges and universities, not to mention other parts of the academic ecosystem, such as accreditors and public research entities. Now, let me just add a big grain of salt to this. Uh, Project 2025 isn't an ironclad total guide to potential Trump administration and its impact on higher education. Uh, Trump has denounced this several times. I mean, obviously he hasn't read it because he doesn't read it. It's nearly 900 pages long. Uh, Trump led the GOP in producing another platform, which I'll be discussing soon, uh, much shorter. But um, we should definitely, you know, in trying to understand where Trump might take higher education uh, or might try and push it, we, we have to keep in mind his other various pronouncements, uh, most notably, uh, his consistent desire to deport millions of people. I'll be speaking to that in another uh, video. Um, and for that alone, we should have major impact on our education. But Project 2025 draws deeply on Republican politicians and office holders, including many from his first administration, not to mention conservative thinking in general. It seems fair to expect, I think, a new administration, a second Trump administration, to try realizing at least a chunk of this, if not more. That's it for now. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments, uh, or if you want to record a video back. I'll put some links in the chat, including to uh, our previous vlog discussion of this, as well as to our, our reading of Project 2025. Uh, this is incredibly dense and challenging stuff. Uh, reading it took some uh, serious effort. I hope everybody here has had a chance to look into it, and uh, again, I would love to hear your thoughts. That's all for this vlog. Bye-bye.